Here are some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. Now that Lord Cornwallis has joined Benedict Arnold, I am not even strong enough to get beaten. Gentlemen, our fleet has finally arrived nearby at Chesapeake Bay. It will carry our troops to a position from which we will crush the rebels once and for all. We must have information. What about your spy, McKee? The one who helped you almost capture Arnold? This slave could make defeating the rebels significantly easier. I have always thought that one person of ability may accomplish great things for the world if he first forms a solid plan. And then passionately devotes himself to following it through. What is it, James? Master, do you believe in freedom? You know I do. I'm a patriot. I believe in this new country. General Lafayette left here only yesterday. I would like your permission to join him. Then I'll come back if I survive. Hmm. All right, James. You may offer your services to the general. Thank you, sir. I'm much obliged. Without a navy, we can do nothing decisive. With it, everything honorable and glorious. General Washington, when do you think the French fleet will get here? I expect General Rochambeau knows when Admiral de Grasse will grace us with his company, but our good ally is not safe. If the ships would arrive, we could take New York and end this war. The French haven't even come through with supports for Lafayette, one of their own. Yes, General Knox. The poor Marquis races through the Virginia heat with barely 1,200 hungry men, trying to stop that traitor from burning more homes to the ground. Benedict Arnold. Pillaging my state. If only Lafayette could capture that traitor. I want the traitor. I want Arnold alive to face the justice he deserves. I would like to face General Arnold too. To ask him if he no longer believes all his lofty words about freedom. But we are powerless, running like rabbits from place to place. Where are our French troops? Our ships? Ships? Ships sail on water. Water is cold. Please don't mention cold, Jobert. It reminds me how hot I am. Write this to Washington, please. Your Excellency. Now that Lord Cornwallis has joined Benedict Arnold here in Virginia, I am not even strong enough to get beaten. Ah. I must find other means with which to fight. I remain supremely confident of our ultimate victory. But sir, I am running out of men, supplies, and ideas. <laughs> Henri, you're in the presence of a general. And a lady. Get dressed. <gasps> General, there's a Negro here who wishes to join us. Bring him in. Who are you, my friend? James, sir. What is your last name, James? My master's name is Amistad, so that is my name, too. How do you think you can serve our cause, James Amistad? What are your skills? Sir, I am invisible. Huh? I'm a black man. Most white folk don't look at me. They don't think about me. They don't care about me. They don't fear me. Do you have any use for an invisible man? Hmm. This horrible southern heat. 
if General Clinton had heeded my advice and permitted me to crush Washington in the North, His Excellency would be a prisoner, and I wouldn't be in Virginia sweating like some beast of burden. General Arnold, sir, you ordered me to bring you any Negroes offering service? Ah, yes, in return for their freedom. They value freedom above all else. That is why Negroes can be relied on. Bring them in. How long have you lived in this area? All my life, sir. You know your way around, even in the dark? Yes, sir. You will serve me as my guide. First, clean my coat. And I do hope you have a talent for killing mosquitoes. Lieutenant, I shall not wish to be disturbed tonight. Now and then I enjoy being alone with the trees, the crickets, and the frogs. I find it my sole opportunity these days for contentment and calm. If and only if there is a matter of extreme urgency, you will find me by the pond, just outside the northeast end of camp, relaxing. Find the spy in our camp, and you will hang him! So we almost captured Arnold, all because of James Armistead? We, oui, Henri. Perhaps James is the secret weapon we've been lacking. Henri, I told you to put on your clothes. Oui. Good morning, sir. Three more desertions last night. It's this heat, Lieutenant. Our troops are from colder climates. I had hoped that seeing me wearing full uniform would inspire them. Joubert, didn't you tell me there used to be warriors who fought naked? You, Henri Lefebvre, are not a warrior. Hmm. Now Clinton calls me North. At least I can meet Washington in his foolish campaign to retake New York. Sir. I'd like to continue to serve, sir. Please don't send me back to slavery. General Cornwallis has arrived here in Petersburg. His lordship can always use another servant. The man doesn't even like to buckle his own shoes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'm much obliged. An ambush! Captain Wayne, we wouldn't have lost any of your brave men at James River if we had intelligence of Cornwallis's plans. Thanks for the lightweight uniforms, sir. You are welcome. And now these rumors Cornwallis will be moving, but where? When? Must have sent you back a lot of money, sir. It was my pleasure. Worth every penny to get you into something other than your underwear. We must have information. What about your spy, McKee? The one who helped you almost capture Arnold. We have not heard from James Armistead in two months. It is my hope he has not been able to get a message out. It is my fear that he is dead or has run away. I ask the spies, sir, do you have any last words? Yes, sir, he answered. But if I told them to you, 
they wouldn't be mine anymore. <laughs> <laughs> More pie. Hmm. Now I shall tell you my news, which is not to travel outside this tent. Gentlemen, our fleet has finally arrived nearby at Chesapeake Bay. It will carry our troops to a position from which we will crush the rebels once and for all. We do not yet have orders as to